this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're glad to have each and every one of you on this beautiful Sunday morning as we gather together as God's wonderful people to worship, gather together to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, that name that's above all names. At his name every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We gather together as God's wonderful people today to fellowship one with another, to continue to pray for one another, to lift up one another, to reach out to one another, to make that difference in one another's lives. We gather today as God's wonderful people to worship. Hymn number 64, Holy, Holy, Holy. morning as we go to the Lord in prayer, we want to remember all those that are sick, those that are shut in, those that are in need of God's touch. We lift up uh, Frances Pace and we uh, ask the Lord to touch her. She's had uh, pneumonia and respiratory problems and we just ask the Lord to touch her in a mighty way. We lift up Becky Kirkland, uh, brother-in-law uh, passed away, and, uh, and then uh, we want to remember Lewis and Peggy's uh, son-in-law. He's got the COVID, and so we asked uh, uh, the Lord to touch him and be with him. Uh, so we continue to pray for all those that are in need today, and we just ask the Lord to continue to be with them in a mighty way. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne of grace today, 
Heavenly Father, we come with many people on our hearts and mind. Lord, we just ask that you might be in the midst of each and every situation. Lord, we thank you for your love and your concern for each and every one of your precious children. Heavenly Father, we thank you for walking with us day by day, for reaching down and touching us and encircling us with your loving arms and holding us close during these days. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mercy and for your grace. We thank you for what you have done for us through your son, Jesus Christ, on Calvary's cross. Through his shed blood, our sins are forgiven. Through him, we find life, and we find it abundantly, and we find that assurance of eternal life. Heavenly Father, we thank you for that assurance today. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who gives us hope for each day. He gives us hope, and he gives us life, and he gives it to us abundantly. Heavenly Father, we thank you for that hope and for that assurance of eternal life that is found in the cross through your Son, Jesus Christ, and his shed blood. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your precious Holy Spirit that comes to live and dwell in each and every one of our hearts. It is your precious Holy Spirit that guides us and directs us in all the ways that you would have us to go. Heavenly Father, may your spirit move within each and every one of our lives in a mighty way. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those that are sick today, all those that need your touch, those that are bereaved. Lord, you know each and every one of them. Lord, you know what each and every one of them needs. Lord, we just ask for your touch to be upon each and every one in a mighty way. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these precious lives that are gathered here today. Heavenly Father, you know each and every one of our hearts, and Lord, you know what we're going through. Lord, we ask for your special touch to be upon each and every one of us as you meet our needs today. And Heavenly Father, we give you the praise and the glory. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the prayer that Jesus prayed on many occasions he taught his disciples to pray, and we pray this morning as your children. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hymn number 369, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine.
Our Psalter reading is found on page 794. We're reading from Psalm 71. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O oh my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel. For you, O oh Lord, are my hope, my trust, O oh Lord, from my youth. Upon you I have leaned from my birth. It was you who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. I have been an example to many, for you are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. Do not cast me off in the day of old age. Forsake me not when my strength is spent. For my enemies speak concerning me. Those who watch for my life consults together, saying, God has forsaken him. Pursue and seize him. For there is no deliverer. O oh God, be not far from me. O oh my God, make haste to help me. By way of announcements, this morning it's good to see the children in Sunday school and we want to make sure that we have teachers for each one of those classes. I think we have, we don't have that many children, but we have three different age groups and so we need teachers for at least three grade, uh, three different classes plus the adults. and. So just keep that in mind as we make sure that we have someone there for the children. We want to make sure that they are taken care of. And then we continue to take up the supplies for the uh, school and we make a difference in the lives of people everywhere when we reach out to make that difference. We continue to help the memorial home and we continue to take up supplies for the food bank. So we continue to be in missions. We continue to make that difference as we continue to reach out. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and the beauty of the day. Heavenly Father, we thank you for each and every gift that's been given this day. Heavenly Father, may those gifts be used to make a difference in this community and the world around about us. Heavenly Father, may we be the light in the midst of the darkness. May we be that word of hope in time of despair. May we hear the cry of those in need. Heavenly Father, we ask now that you might bless those that continue to give week after week to make that difference. Heavenly Father, we ask that you might bless them a hundredfold. We ask it in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Would you stand for the doxology? <laughs>
In the fourth chapter of the book of Ephesians, we begin with verse 25. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry, and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the things which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearer. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be you kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Be you therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for our sweet-smelling Savior. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for this day and for this scripture and for the message that you have given unto me as I break the bread of life unto your wonderful people. Heavenly Father, may every word that flow from my lips be pleasing unto you. And Heavenly Father, these your precious children who have come today to hear the bread of life. Heavenly Father, may their hearts and meditation thereof be pleasing unto you. Heavenly Father, we ask for the anointing of every word that is spoken and for every word that is received. We ask it today in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our subject today is the devil or the Holy Spirit. Apostle Paul says, which one of them are we going to allow to lead us? Are we going to allow the devil to lead us? Or are we going to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us? Have you ever got mad? Have you ever got angry? Have you ever allowed your temper to get the best of you. Most of you probably have heard the story of Dr. Ben Carson, who was a neurosurgeon for children, retired and then served in the Trump administration as head of the housing and urban development. But Dr. Carson had a temper and a lot of times that temper would get the best of him and he would get angry. His mother and father divorced when he was eight years old and at the age of 14, he gave his heart to Jesus Christ. God became his heavenly father and also his earthly father. But there was times when his temper would get him in trouble he ran around with 
a, a gang of boys. And one day he got angry and got in an argument with another person. And he got so angry at him that he reached into his pocket and he pulled out his pocket knife and he lunged at the boy. And the knife caught in the buckle, the belt buckle, and it hung there in the belt buckle and it did no damage to the other person. But it hurt Dr. Carson so bad that he went home and fell on his knees. And for three hours he prayed to God that God would help him with his temper, that he would no longer get angry. And he said the Lord touched him and helped him with his temper and he never got angry again to that point where he would do harm to somebody. Have you ever got angry or mad? Well, last Monday I got mad and I got angry. I don't usually get mad and I don't usually get angry. But I was down in the bottom picking blueberries and I walked over to the first short row on the right hand side and I reached up to start picking and all of a sudden I felt something stinging my left foot, ankle, and it kept. And I looked down and I had stepped on a yellow jacket's nest and those yellow jackets was all over my pants leg. And I was slapping at them and, and I backed up and they came at me and you heard that run, forest, run. Well, run, forest, run, I took off down the road to get away from them and they followed me and finally I was able to get away from them and I knocked them off. About 10 of them stung that left ankle and they got me on both legs and got me on the hand. And so after I was able to deal with the pain and went to the house and got some alcohol, I quoted some scripture, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. And I said, you jokers, I'll be back for you. You won't see the morning. And so I went back and I picked berries until just about dawn. And they had a hole about the size of a baseball. And need to say, the sun didn't go down on my raft. I took care of them. Have you ever got angry or mad? Apostle Paul says it's okay to get mad and get angry as long as you don't allow the sun to go down on your raft and you don't let it lead you to hurt someone else. It's always thought that Christians should never get angry. But folks, when we live in a world where we see misjustice, people being taken advantage of, when we see politicians lying to us, when we see people tramping on the Constitution and they know they're doing it and they say they know they're doing it, but yet they still do it. It's time for us to get mad. It's time for us to get angry. It's time for us to stand up for what's right. But Apostle Paul also says, don't let the devil guide you. Don't let the devil show you the way. Get rid of that which stands in your way. People came from all walks of life to the church where Apostle Paul was. And Apostle Paul said to them, stop stealing and go to work and work for your labor. 
And I know every one of us want to get ahead in life. We want to have better for our children, and I, we want our grandchildren to have it better than our children. But Apostle Paul says, as we take care of ourselves, we also need to take care of those that are in need. In other words, Apostle Paul says we don't need to build bigger barns and tear down those barns and build bigger barns, but we need to simply look around about us and see that there are people in need and reach out to make that need. Apostle Paul says you need to tell the truth. Don't lie to one another. But we are God's people. We need to tell the truth to one another. And Apostle Paul says your word matters. Your word is like a deed. If you tell somebody you don't do something, then you do it. If you tell somebody you don't be there tomorrow, then be there. How many of us today have people say to us, well, I'll be there tomorrow, and tomorrow never comes. We should be as good as our word, and our word should be as good as our deed. If we say we will do something for somebody, then we ought to do it. And then Apostle Paul says, do away with all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil thoughts and all malice. We need to get rid of all those things that will cause us to bring harm to others as well as ourselves. We need to get rid of that bitterness and anger all of those things deal with our temper, and we need to be able to control our temper. And so we look inside of us to make sure that we deal with whatever we're facing so that that bitterness and anger does not lead to destruction it can lead to murder. It can lead to a lot of different things. And so we make sure that that anger and that bitterness and that wrath, that the sun does not go down on that bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil doing. We settle it before the sun goes down. What keeps us up at night so often is not the fact of what we eat, but what eats at us, folks. We need to make sure that we deal with that inwardly, and then we deal with it upwardly. We ask God to help us. We ask the Holy Spirit to dwell with us, to help us to overcome anything that we face in this life. Apostle Paul says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. What does Apostle Paul mean when he says, do not, do not grieve the Holy Spirit? Well, when Jesus Christ was getting ready to go back to the Father, he told his disciples he would send them the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit would be their comforter, it would be their advocate, it would be with them, it would remind them of all things, it would remind them of scriptures, it would bring to their memory all the different things that they had done while he was on earth. And so when Jesus Christ died and he atoned for our sin on Calvary's cross, when he paid the sin debt, when he gave us the gift of salvation, he gave us that precious Holy Spirit. 
And that Holy Spirit lives and dwells in our hearts to guide us. The Holy Spirit will never do anything unless the Father tells him what to do. At the same time, the Holy Spirit will not keep us from doing what we want to do because we have the free will to do it. But the Holy Spirit will remind you, maybe you should not have done that. Maybe you should not have said that. Maybe you should not have gone there. But the Holy Spirit will guide us. And the Holy Spirit will give us guidance. But when we fail to do what the Holy Spirit asks us to do, because the Holy Spirit is telling us what the Heavenly Father wants us to know. And so when we fail to do it, it grieves the Holy Spirit. It grieves the Heavenly Father. When you and I fail to do what the Spirit asks us to do, And so we need to deal with the things of life that keeps us from being what Christ wants us to be. Apostle Paul always looked to the cross. Everything that Apostle Paul did was under the shadow of the cross. And Apostle Paul says that we should forgive one another as Christ has forgiven us. We should forgive one another because the Scripture says that if we do not forgive one another, then the Heavenly Father will not forgive us. Peter said, well, how many times do we forgive? And Jesus says, as often as that person asks for forgiveness. And so it is we give forgiveness Every time that person asks for forgiveness, we don't harbor that bitterness and that anger and that wrath and that clamor, but we give it to the Holy Spirit so that we can live a life of love. God is love, and God wants us to live a life of love. We love him because he first loved us. Satan comes to steal and kill and to destroy. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And so this morning, Apostle Paul says we have a choice. What do we want to follow after the devil? to kill and to steal and to destroy? Or what do we want to follow after the Holy Spirit and have that which is joy, peace, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit? The choice is ours this morning. We can choose whether we follow Satan or whether or not we follow the Holy Spirit. Our closing hymn, 298, when I surveyed the wondrous cross. Let's sing all four verses this morning. All four verses of 298.
surveyed the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died. My riches gain I count but loss and poor contempt on all my pride. Heavenly Father, in the shadow of the old rugged cross, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who gave it all for us to allow the Holy Spirit to come and to live and dwell in our hearts that we might be able to face the different situations in life. Heavenly Father, may your spirit move within each and every one of us that we might draw closer to you and closer to one another, that we might love one another as you have loved us. Heavenly Father, touch each and every one this morning. Bless them in a mighty way. For we ask it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.